listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Ty Brown of Six Figure Dog Business. Now, this is a show where we teach you how to earn a six figure living from your dog related business. Now, I'm really excited because we've got a uh, we've got a special guest with us today. We've got Martin Dealey, who's the executive director of IACP. Who many of you are probably familiar with the IACP. If not, we're going to explain what that is to you here in a second. And so he's going to be on the show with us, and I'm really excited to have him as a guest. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. It's time for school for you and your friends, your furry best friends. Train your dog the fun and easy way with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Teacher's Pet host Pia Silvani teaches you step-by-step how to train your dog the fun and easy way. You get eight 30-minute live audio training sessions, complete transcripts of each session, plus a basic training manual to get you and your dog off to a great start. Training begins the moment you bring your dog home. Teacher's Pet Sessions offers positive reinforcement training to shape your dog's behavior and encourages upbeat, enthusiastic responses to ensure that your dog will enjoy learning. Teacher's Pet Sessions dog training is fun at both ends of the leash. So listen, learn, and laugh with your dog with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Get your copy of Teacher's Pet Sessions Volume 1 today. To order, go to teacherspetsessions.com. Hi, this is Pia Silvani, your host. Bring your dog, tug toy, and treats, and get ready to have some fun. Teacherspetsessions.com Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, and we're back, and we've got Martin Dealey, the executive director of IACP, on the show with us. And so, thanks for being on the show. How are you doing today, Martin? Oh, extremely well. Been out with the dogs and had a nice time. So, everything's uh, what they call in England, hunky-dory. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, you're English. I couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, couldn't tell. Well, it's the Dallas accent that goes through, you see. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. And so, yeah, we're thrilled to have you on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you're the executive director of IACP. Why don't you tell us what IACP is? Well, the IACP was started 10 years ago. It stands for the International Association of Canine Professionals. Uh, and what we found was that a lot of people in the dog business are working by themselves. And we wanted to network so that we could help each other with not just recommendations, but perhaps with business support and uh, training education and anything which would help someone make a business out of their uh, love of dogs. Excellent. And that's why we wanted to have you on the show today so that we could kind of pick your brain about how to grow business. A lot of people nowadays with the economic crisis that we've been having and whatnot, they, you know, either they want to start a business because they're tired of corporate America or they want to grow their business. And so we're really excited to kind of pick your brain. Before we get into that, though, I kind of want to just, you know, we've got a great bio on you, a great biography. And for those that are interested more, you can just head over to PetLifeRadio.com. We've got a really interesting bio on Martin Dealey. There's something about you that I didn't know in reading this that I was actually very impressed, and I'm sure anyone would be impressed. You've actually interviewed the Queen of England. (laughs) Yes, I've met her quite a few times, and uh, at one of the meetings, I asked her if I could actually interview her about her dogs. 
And she said, oh. uh, if my press office will let you. And so I asked them and they said, we will ask the Queen. And she said, yes. Uh, and so I spent a day with her in Sandringham talking about her dogs, playing with the dogs with her, and then wrote an article which went all the way around the world. And it was a, it was a great honor. And no other journalist has been allowed a personal interview. That's amazing. That's awesome. Now, haven't I seen her with a picture of corgis? Is that what she has or what does she have? <laughs> Oh, she has corgis in the in the palace, in the houses. But her big love is, believe it or not, working cocker spaniels and, of course, Labrador. She's very well known for her Labradors, which she works in the shooting field. She's a great trainer, and she's a wonderful handler of dogs. You're kidding. That's awesome. And so you were able to spend a whole day with her at, at one of her residences? Yes, this was at Sandringham. And uh, we went and uh, had an interview, and then we went out and played with the dogs, and I took some photographs, and we just, uh, as you might say, a ball. Uh, and she was absolutely delightful, wonderful lady to work with. Wow, that's an amazing honor. That's really cool to hear about. I mean, that right there is, you could write a book just about that experience, I would imagine. Oh, well, people thought I had. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. And so uh, how did you get into dog training? I mean, what's your background? I mean, where, where did this love come from, and how did you learn your, your expertise? Uh, well, a friend of mine, I, I was uh, over here, you'd call it a university professor. I was a lecturer in business and management at a university. And uh, <laughs> I was asked by a friend if I'd like to go shooting. And we went shooting, and he took a dog with him, which was a crazy English Springer Spaniel called Bramble. And I fell in love with Bramble, and I fell in love with the idea of shooting, and I got a gun, and I got a dog, and I went shooting, and then I realized I liked the dog work more. And once <laughs> I got my first rosette in a competition, that was me hooked for life. Um, oh, excellent. And then I, I just built, it. I built my own kennels in England, and I started to train dogs for people. I started to help solve behavior problems in England. I wrote three books. I did a lot of videos, and because I can talk a lot, I did a lot of commentary work <laughs> and training of people with dogs. Oh, well, excellent. So how did you get over here to the United States? How did you cross the pond? <laughs> I met a lady, like always. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. They brought me across to bring the missions this way, you know. Gotcha. Now you find yourself in Florida, is that correct? That's right. We, uh, we were in Dallas to start with, hence the accent. And, sure. uh, <laughs> and then we came down to Florida. I was running workshops in Florida, and we saw a house here with five acres, and it was right next to a, a friend of mine who has 350 acres where I can play. And uh, so we impetuously bought it and then had to build a business up again. It took us about two years, which is normal. But we have a very nice, successful little business down here, and we enjoy being in Florida. I, I like sunshine. You can keep the rain of England. <laughs> I was going to say, growing up in England, I'm sure you're very used to the weather of Florida. It's got to uh, be very similar. It, uh, yeah, yes, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I'm excited to talk to you about today, and it's obvious when you're speaking, just the attitude that you have. And I wanted to talk about that because I know that that's one thing that you're big on in growing business is you grow your business through creativity and attitude. Too many people, attitude is something that they paste on. You know, When they stand in front of a client, they're going to paste on this attitude of, hey, I'm happy to be here. I like... But in reality, they're just like, oh, I want to work with your dog. you know. And so I wanted to talk about it because a lot of people look at ad attitude as a soft science. But the reality is when attitude is approached the proper way, when creativity is approached the proper way, it actually is a great tool for growing business. And so I know this is going to be a general question, but just right off the bat, what are kind of your thoughts about attitude, creativity, et cetera, and growing a business? When people come to you for a service, they don't come to you because you're a good dog trainer. They come to you because they like you. Or if they don't, they've got to quickly like you. They've got to work with you. And the thing I find is that you're really selling you. I'm not selling dog training. When people come here, they look at my property, they look at me, they look at my wife, they look at where the dogs will be, and they say, I like it here. They don't say, I like the way you train a dog. They say, I like you. And this is an important thing. And you're quite right. We can all have these kind of glib phrases and we can all have this kind of selling attitude and we can learn how to use selling techniques. But mm -hmm. people see through it. And really, you know, you've got to have the, the personality. And, and it's not always easy. Some people, their voices aren't quite right. Some people, their facial, facial expressions aren't right. And you can't win everybody. But there's sure. no doubt about it that you, you are selling you. And, and that's what they're going to be buying at the end of the day. And so what is a big mistake that you'll actually see dog trainers, and again, this doesn't apply to dog trainers only. We're talking today to dog trainers, dog groomers, pet sitters, dog walkers. What are some of the mistakes that you see these business owners make along those lines? Well, it's interesting that I sometimes think that they, uh, if they've been in the business for a long time, they almost come like the hospital consultant. They become mm -hmm. divorced from their client. And in other words, you know, they, they, they don't always have that personal touch with them anymore. 
they are beginning to doubt the client in some way and think the client maybe should know more than they actually do. And, and really, you have, to, you have to pitch yourself at the level of the client. Some people are very, very inexperienced. Some people have got very, very fixed ideas. And some people know a lot, but have got a little problem that they feel almost embarrassed about uh, because they can't solve it themselves. And you've got to be able to pitch at their kind of level and, and relate to them. You know, and I hear it quite a bit. She was a yes, but person, just would not listen. I couldn't spend time with that. Well, hold on a minute. Yes, but person was trying to actually take services from you and pay you for it. And you have to be able to understand people and, and their problems and their situations. Because sometimes it's not always the dog. It can be a family problem. It can be a husband and wife problem. It can sure. be a, a fear of legislation problem. And, you know, we've got to get underneath their kind of reason for coming to us and help them solve it. Exactly. And I want to highlight something you said because I think it's really important for people when they're trying to sell their services and grow their business. You know, when you're kind of involved in something, when you're day in, day out training dogs, obviously you gain this level of expertise. And you're right, sometimes trainers will take, you know, uh, take it for granted and, and believe that everyone else has can talk on the level that they talk about dogs and about behavior. And so they start speaking like this. And, and you're right, you know, I've seen trainers and, and other business professionals get frustrated when somebody doesn't seem to understand what they're saying. And it really can help you and damage the sale, right? Well, it does because if you think about it, we have a terminology that we use. And it might be quite everyday to us, but not to our mm -hmm. client. And, you know, this is the thing that we have to do. We haven't <laughs> got to kind of talk down to them. Uh, we have to actually explain it on a level they understand, sometimes even demonstrate to them what we're talking about. And it is important that you, you create that relationship with your client, you know, mm -hmm. even on the telephone. One of the things... As you can probably tell, I'm a lucky guy in many ways. Two things. First of all, I have a lovely accent. Oh, people tell me I have. I've lived with it for a long time, so I never noticed it. But people tell me your accent is great, Marty. Secondly, I smile a lot and laugh a lot. And thirdly, people, because of my accent and I do that, can take my joking. When clients come along to me, they'll often say, oh, you must think I'm silly. Oh, dear me. I mean, this is a problem. You know, and I say, oh, you know, I see this many times and that's how I make my money. I'm delighted you're here. You know, and they laugh. <laughs> And that's good because it's important that they begin to feel relaxed with me so they can tell me about everything. Otherwise, it doesn't come out, and I'm not really helping the dog unless I get all the information. And, and you know, that's a good point because a lot of – I've heard some dog trainers say, well, you know, after maybe not getting a sale or something not going right, ah, oh, well, that's not the kind of client I want to work with anyways. <laughs> if you think about it, marketing and the way that you speak and the way that you deal with people, it's about helping those people. But more than not, I mean, we're in a great industry that we're really about helping animals. And I love, and I love, love, love to help clients, but my favorite thing is to help a dog become better and a dog become more comfortable and happier. And, uh, and let's not forget that as dog business professionals, that, uh, that we can really accomplish that if we hone our techniques. And the funny thing that I found, and maybe you can concur, is that the more you do this, the more it becomes a part of you. And it's not an act, and it's not a sales technique, and it's not a facade that you're putting on. You're really just generally, genuinely interested in helping the client and helping the dog, right? Well, that's correct. But you've got to be very careful that you don't actually put all the emphasis on the dog and not realize the owner's problem. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I find is speak for the dog. In other words, say, oh, gosh, I can understand. You must feel really upset that you're creating these problems, mustn't you? And the dog will look at you as though, you know, uh, <laughs> it's easier when the dog tells the owner what to do. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you use it that way. He'll feel, he told me he feels a lot more comfortable when I use this collar rather than that collar. Don't you? And the look and smile because you're talking for the dog. Uh, and many times, you know, if you leave a little message, one of the things my wife does, which is marvelous, she will write little letters from the dog to the owner while we're training them. Oh, yeah. And the, and the dog tells the owner what he wants to do when he comes home. Not me, not my wife. And they'll take it from the dog where the wanderer was take it from you. And it's a nice little touch that you're speaking for the dog for the simple reason being you've got that relationship then with everybody. And it is interesting. Yeah. So it is the dog that we're looking after, but the dog is helping the owner to change. Oh, that's excellent. I mean, that's a really good tip, and it's just a perspective I never even thought of. And speaking of which, you know, you and I spoke about this a while ago. We talked about how there's dog trainers out there, and again, dog business professionals in whatever your industry – but a lot of them are so creative in how they do things. They're so creative in, in how they train dogs. And 
just what you mentioned, so creative in how they get the uh, get the message across to the owners. They're creative in their agility techniques, their gun dog training, whatever the case might be. <laughs> Yet when it comes to business, like there's a lack of creativity. Yes. Explain that. I mean, what can we do to not have that happen? Well, I, I think it's always the case that uh, I suppose it. You know, we're not business people. We go into dogs because we love dogs and we want to train dogs, or we want to groom dogs, or we want to do something with dogs. Mm-hmm. And really, <laughs> you make a lot of excuses not to do the business side. You haven't got time for it. Um, what I would say, therefore, is many times if you feel you're not a business person, get somebody who can help you. In other words, if you have got a, a website that isn't attracting people, then go for a, someone who does search engine optimization and has proven themselves. If you're not very good at keeping your books, get a bookkeeper, get an accountant under contract because your money is from actually training dogs and that's what you love. You've got to have the people skills, don't get me wrong. But, you know, when it comes to business and the creativity, we look at things like Yellow Pages, website, go to the vets. But, you know, probably one of the best places to put your cards is in the nail shop or the hairdressers because it's ladies who bring them to you all the time or get in touch Mm -hmm. first. And it's simple, you know, easy little things like that that we often overlook. And we put barriers up sometimes about business. Oh, I don't think it'll work. So we don't try it. And a lot of these kind of things in business really are inexpensive. They're not big things, you know, they're, they're small things. And one of the things I ask for all the time is testimonials. I ask them for it. And can I have a, I'd love to put a photograph of you and my dog on the website. Is that okay? What, on your website? Yes, I would. Oh, terrific. Thank you. And they love it. And I love it too, you know. So there's a lot of things that you can do and follow up with afterwards. It's not just for the dog. But our love is that a dog stays in the family all its life, of course. And everybody's happy because it makes a family. Okay, now we've got to go to a break, but you just mentioned one thing that has brought me personally a ton of money and a ton of business when we come back from the break. So, so stay with us. We're going to come back here in just a couple minutes, and we're going to talk with Martin Dealey. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Give your dog some thought with Dog Thoughts. It's the iPhone application that everyone's talking about. What do you think of this? A man in Davis, California says he's invented an application for the iPhone that claims it can read your dog's mind. No, it's true. I read about it on my cat's Twitter page. Jay Leno talked about it, CBS reported on it, and now you can see what all the buzz is about. Created just for dog lovers, Dog Thoughts makes taking photos of your furry best friend more fun. Shake your dog and read his mind. (gasps) On your iPhone, of course. Take a pic of your pup, shake your phone, and watch as his thoughts appear on the screen. Does he have a bone to pick with you, or is he having a tail-wagging day? Get your Dog Thoughts iPhone app today. Just 99 cents. Go to PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. That's PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid Pictures of You and Your Pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. 
every week on demand. This is the place for a special paparazzi treat, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Right before the break, I kind of teased something because you mentioned something that for me has been huge. And I want to talk to you a little bit now about attracting clients because, like I say, you're the executive director of this large, large organization. And one of your missions is, and one of your goals is, is to teach your members how to attract clients. And of course, that's the goal of this entire radio show, how to attract clients. And so, like I said, you mentioned one thing (laughs) that to me has been huge and that's testimonials on my website you know I've got uh, I don't know 20 testimonials I've got tons of them because I've got a lot of happy clients now I look at my competition and I bet they've got a lot of happy clients too but they don't have that many testimonials what do you do to get these testimonials do you coach your clients on how to give a testimonial I mean yep. obviously you have to be good at training that's going to be step number one but once you're good at training how do you get these testimonials well, it's a bit more than good at training you've got to be <laughs> this is interesting. I think every one of my friends that comes around and we are now strong friends with have been my clients. Mm-hmm. They were my clients first. And it's quite interesting that, uh, you know, you make friends with your clients. And if you say to them, because we call them up and say, how's little Sam doing or how's little Ben doing or whatever it is? Tell us a little bit. Have you got any problems? Can we help you? We'll follow up. And if they go, oh, that's great. Would you, would you mind putting it? a little bit of writing for me and I'd love a photograph of you and Ben together or the family with him together and they go oh would you yeah they don't think about it otherwise people often if they're happy don't tell you it's when they're unhappy they tell you so there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with following through making sure they are happy uh, and then asking them would, would you mind you know would you mind putting that testimonial up the other thing is and this is a nice one of course you on your website I think when people go to a website, they should relate to it. And mm-hmm. I've had certain of my members who say, people aren't coming to my website. When I go and look at it, it's perhaps something like police dog protection on the front page. And I've got little Fluffy who needs housebreaking. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I want him to be on a sleeve being slung around the, you know, the, the yard. Um, <laughs> so it, it's an interesting one. That's the first thing. The other thing is that if you go to our websites, the International Association website, canineprofessionals.com, or mine, floridadogtrainer.com, you'll see a, a famous man there called uh, Caesar Milan. I've worked mm-hmm. with quite a lot, and we are the only organization that Caesar recommends. So that's one hell of a testimonial when somebody goes there and they go, wow. And then they look at other testimonials as well. And I put one or two of the best ones on my front page because I'm proud of them. It's like a page of honor. Don't be afraid to ask for testimonials. People, if you've done a nice job and you ask them correctly, um, because as I say, I want them to be proud of their dog and proud of themselves that they've done. And that testimonial is not just for me. It's because they've done the work afterwards or with me. And one thing you just mentioned, I think, you know, I'm not actually taking advantage of that you are, which is great. You know, you put, whether it's a celebrity testimonial or somebody just like your target market, you know, Sally Sue, the, the homemaker that has the chihuahua that won't be housebroken. Correct. That's a person that goes on your homepage so that someone, like you mentioned, can really just get on there and relate and say, okay, this is for me. Because you're right, you know, a lot of people, and I'm very proud of my affiliation with having trained police dogs and having done a lot of protection dogs. But you're right, right you don't want, if that's your main business, put that on your home page but if your main business is house training and obedience and fixing behavior problems then then you're right you need to relate with your target market through your website and so that's an excellent point and so now let me ask you that how did you get uh, how did you become affiliated with Caesar Milan <laughs> oh when he was first starting uh, it's a long story I suppose I'm not too sure he, he, he sent me DVDs of his first kind of series Mm-hmm. And said, people have been criticizing me, and uh, what do you think? Do you think, in fact, National Geographic sent it? And I said, well, I like what I'm seeing. I really do. But you must put a disclaimer up there that people should actually go to a professional and not try some of these things by themselves. And I wrote letters of support. And because of that, he seemed to like me. And oh, <laughs> I worked with National Geographic on some of the PR. And then we did a DVD together called Sit and Stay the Caesar Way. Because Caesar says many times, he trains people, he doesn't train dogs. And he mm-hmm. wants 
someone who could train dogs to come along and to work him uh, work with this latest DVD. And so I went along and uh, we filmed together. And we've met quite a few times now, and uh, I, I consider him a very good friend. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. And so, and like I say, one of the reasons when I first joined the IACP, I'm a member of your organization. Correct. And yeah. uh, that did stand out to me. You know, the first time that I went on your website and I saw Caesar Milan, and I know, because I haven't seen Caesar Milan elsewhere other than National Geographic, I know he's not out there just a shill for any other, any company. When I saw that he was on there, you know, picture with yourself and, and whatnot, that was obviously impressive. But again, that's something that Joe Blow down the street, any dog trainer can do that, not with Caesar Milan, but any dog trainer can do that, can get these testimonials like you're mentioning mm-hmm. and uh, get them on their website, get them on any of their literature. And that's just such a huge selling point. I can't tell you how many times people have said, because I'll often ask people, why did you hire me? You know, and people will say, I looked at the testimonials on your website. And that was it for me, you know, and so I had all this other cool stuff on my website, but they didn't care. They wanted to see that I could solve problems for other people, you know, and I think that's what your members of the IACP are looking to do too: solve problems. They're not in the business of training dogs. They're in the business of solving problems, and they need to prove that through social proof, right? Yes, that's correct. And, you know, although there isn't what you might call a totally national official certification for dog trainers, we have some tremendous schools uh, in this country that dog trainers go to. Also, Mm -hmm. there are dog trainers who have been with like the IACP for a long time and proven their expertise and gained certification. And some of the, I mean, student-wise, they come to my school and people come to this school and then they're proud afterwards that they've been on a five-day, two-week, three-week course with me and put it up there. And the public see this and it gives a, a qualification to what they're saying they can do. Uh, and then mm-hmm. they follow through. And it's nice to be able to have that where they can then refer back to the schools that they went to or the certification they've got and find that they're dealing with someone who has got ability. Sure. Yeah, and it's, it's proven ability. Any dog trainer can say how good he is, but if other people, professionals in the industry, clients can say how good he is, that's what people care to see. You know, that's what people care about. How, how many members are there of the IACP? 1,328, I was told about a week ago. There might be a few more now. Uh, wow. We're in about 18 countries, 19 countries, something like that, but most of them in America and Canada. Wow, that's amazing. And so what are some of the tools that, uh, that are available to members for marketing their business, for growing their business? What do you do to help people grow their business? I suppose the biggest one really is uh, we have a database so that anyone who is looking for a dog trainer or a groomer or a kennel in their areas can go to uh, find a professional from our website on canineprofessionals.com. They can put in their zip code and then a radius of up to, I think it's 100 miles, and uh, find the trainers or find the professionals in their area that they can go to. And what a lot of people are telling me now is that they're getting contacts from this finder professional because Caesar, when anyone goes to Caesar Milan's site, is directed to our finder professional site. And therefore, I mean, Caesar can't solve every problem in this country. He has to admit <laughs> that. Much as I know him so well, he would love to be able to. And that's what he is trying to do. He recommends people that he has faith in. And luckily, uh, we're, we're one of those groups. So people come to that. We do have uh, an educational quarterly magazine uh, with a lot of training information in there to help our members. We have a, a national conference. People use, of course, our logo on their site, which, again, adds credibility And I do get people who actually send me, this is my website, this is my business card, this is my flyer, what do you think? Could it be improved? And, you know, when we're in business and we're starting with business, we're always looking at economies, and we can't always afford a professional to do those things. But we have uh, discussion groups, and uh, you put a a problem, you put an idea, you put your uh, slogans or whatever else it is, your business ideas to that group. And somebody will come back and say, yes, that works, or no, this doesn't work, or it works in my area. And you can get, if you like, networking and advice from your peers. And that helps tremendously because it gives you a lot of confidence that others have tried it or others have said this. Why don't you add this to it? Why don't you do that to it? And uh, we're always trying to make our members successful because if they're successful, they stay in the business. If they're not successful, then we may lose a good trainer because without money to pay your mortgages and your insurance and everything else like that, I'm afraid you're not going to be in the business very long. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, you bring up a good point, though, of of getting other people to look at your stuff. You know, I I have this amazingly large ego. (laughs) So every now and then when I'm doing something, I'm like, boy, I'm really good at this. And this is just a great ad campaign or this is just a great whatever. 
and then I hand it to my wife or then I hand it to, you know, another friend or something like that or, or put it out on a list like you're mentioning and, and I hear some of the feedback and realize, boy, you know, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. But the education is there. You need to kind of get your stuff out in front of other people so other people can tell you where you're going right and where you're going wrong. And I guess that's, you know, just one of the great benefits of being a member of an organization like yours is, like you mentioned, this networking aspect that, uh, uh, that we have. And so excellent information. So You've got to be willing to listen, though, Ty. And, and that's one of the things. You know, sometimes you get very defensive about what you've actually created. Taking, if you like, even constructive criticism can be difficult. I've just done some talks at a big grooming expo up in Pennsylvania, which was just wonderful. I, I talk very similar to what I'm talking to you here. And what is lovely there, and, and maybe it's the accent as well, and maybe it's the sense of humor, <laughs> I know. But people have written to me since, since saying, what well, great ideas, I'm going to try that. And... Uh, I think that's the thing. You've got to open your mind. Like you open your mind to training a dog because everyone is different. You have to open your mind to marketing and business because every situation is different. Every place is different. Every town is different. All your Mm -hmm. customers that's there, you know. So whatever works for you, and you've got to find out what works for you and your business. get, Get a niche for yourself. And that's one of the reasons that uh, this this radio show was created is because there's no one way to train a dog. There's no one way to market a dog business. And so I really like that comment that you made that people listened to what you said and said, okay, we're going to go apply this. Because I'm a victim of this oftentimes where I hear a great you know, piece of information. I don't even do anything. And so I guess that's kind of the, the challenge to everyone who's listening to this show, whatever industry you're in. You know, we've gotten some great kind of coaching education from Martin here. Go out and apply it. You know, go out and just do it. I mean – if it's worth doing, it's worth doing bad to start out with. You know, just get out there and start doing it. You're going to find out what works, what doesn't work, but you're never going to find out if you don't even just start trying. And so, great piece of information there, Martin. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, it's an interesting one. I've got it written in front of me on the screen here, and I've just seen it. You mentioned the word coaching. Many times, dog training perhaps should be renamed to coaching owners to train their dogs. And mm-hmm. maybe sometimes we should be coaching business people, which is the dog trainer, to actually run their business better. Really, to get that message across, many times you have to. I was a consultant, a management consultant in London at the age of 22. And what I found was you went in there, you found out the problems, you actually asked them questions so they came up with the answers. And when you walked away, they'd made the changes, they were successful, and they were saying they'd done it themselves. And And I guess that is a good coach, right? The one that allows them to do it themselves, right? That's right. And they feel then confident in themselves uh, because it's successful. You know, you're you're actually building people. You're developing people while you're actually doing this. And they're learning more. You're not just telling them because telling doesn't always work. Right. Right. Excellent. Well, we're running out of time. I wish we had more time because uh, we've got a lot of great information here. We might just have to have you back on on another day. But once again, I want to say a huge thank you to you, Martin, for, for this information. Now, again, you've got several different services and organizations that you're affiliated with. Real quick, why don't you tell us you know, how people can get in touch with you and for what and your associations and whatnot? Well, the most important thing is if you're uh, uh, in the dog business or if you are a member of the public looking for dog service, go to www.canineprofessionals.com and it's canine spelt out, C-A-N-I-N-E professionals.com. That is the IACP and there's a lot of information there. There's even articles on how to solve some of the problems. But if you're a professional, then we're there to help you make success in your business, whether it's in the dog training side or whether it's on the grooming side or whether it's just running the business side, which, as I say, is the most important because unless you make money, you're not in business. On my side, floridadogtrainer.com is, is me. If you go to find a professional anywhere in the country, you can get uh, our IACP members. If you're in Florida and you go to Florida Dog Trainer, even if you are not near me, I can often find trainers for you in this state. And then there's the International Dog School, uh, internationaldogschool.com, which is the international school for dog trainers, which I run here. And uh, we talk about business, I think, almost as much as we talk about training. Well, good. Like I say, because you hit the nail on the head. I mean, if you don't know how to sell your services, you can't help anybody. And so a lot of people look at sales as a four-letter word or marketing as a four-letter word, but the reality is if you can't do it, you don't get to help anybody. And that's why most people get into this business to help people and dogs. And so sales and marketing is something that it's necessary, and it should be a fun thing to do uh, you know, as you get the hang of it and as you really enjoy it. So, But uh, in any case, again, thank you, Martin. There's been some real you know, nuggets of gold in this interview, and you've given some really great information. Please go apply this everybody who's been listening and really just grow your business. So thanks again, Martin. We appreciate you having you on. 
Lovely. I'll leave you with that message, though. Remember, the most important thing within your business is you. And so sell you and be that character that people want to actually work with and have a relationship with. It's important. Excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, have a great day, Martin. Thank you. Okay, so if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for a show that you'd like me to put on, please email me at ty at petliferadio.com or go to my website, which is sixfiguredogbusiness.com. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.